Warning, Marriage on the Rocks provides unfiltered, unconventional, and sometimes unwelcomed relationship advice. Seth and Crystal are certified relationship coaches who have adopted specific methods that work very well for them. Your results may vary. Hey everyone, welcome to our 60 second episode of Marriage on the Rocks. I'm Crystal. I'm Seth. Every week we have a drink with our discussion, and this week we wanted to do a different little twist on Moscow mules and make a spicy mule. What do you think? That's pretty good. Yeah. I love it. I like it. It is awesome. Uh Uh-huh. If if you like spicy... Which I love spicy. Yeah. You do. This is it. Can you taste the heat? A little bit. Uh I told you to... I didn't want her to take a huge gulp because... I thought it was pretty spicy. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. What, the flavor. The flavor's good. It's though. one of the best. It's it's one of my favorite things. It's good, yeah. I was just, as I was making it, it was just, I, I like licked the spoon and was like, holy cow, that tastes good. Um, you could, if those people watching, and you'll see the pictures as we release the video. There's, there's actual fresh jalapenos in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I did was, I, there was a weird... I don't want to say weird. There's some instruction for it, but I decided to say forget it and do kind of my own thing with it. Um, so what I did was I took a fresh jalapeno, sliced it up, threw a few slices, you know, with the seeds in the muddler with an entire lime. And this is for two drinks with a whole lime it's worth of lime juice and muddled the jalapenos and the lime juice together. So it made super spicy lime juice. Oh, that's what you did first? That's so what I did first. Oh, okay. So then I dumped that in the shaker, mm-hmm. and then I topped it off with, um, each drink has two ounces of tequila, mm-hmm. so four ounces total for two drinks, and then another ounce of triple sec, and shook that up and then poured it, and then I added ice and then layered the jalapenos in the ice, dumped the, the mix with the tequila and the triple sec over the ice and the jalapenos, and then topped it off with ginger beer. Yeah, uh-huh. we have, and we got the Zevia. Yeah, the sugar-free, uh, no ginger carbs, free. and uh, yeah. ginger beer. Uh huh. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Um, but it's, I think our I think our lips are gonna be on fire by the end of the episode. They may be. They may be all red. <laughs> don't don't like make a mistake. I know. And rub oh, your right. eye or something. Well, and and then I should have told you that the that these jalapenos, like this batch, is like. Well, when I was cut spicy. into it, I was you like, man, tell. I could just tell they were yeah. hot. Um, yeah. 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 They're good. I, I love it. I think yeah, it's really it's good. Yeah, good. Uh-huh. Um, so this week we are going to be talking about just, I guess, kind of stuff like why people get offended. <clears throat> why do you get offended um, and stop being a little bitch. <laughs> um, but before we get started with that, Seth has his dumbass post of the week. <clears throat> Wow, <laughs> I got the <laughs> spicy hit me. Um, yeah, so this is marriage is the bond between a person who never remembers anniversaries and another who never forgets them. You know, this this kind of ties in with other topics we've talked about with, mm-hmm. especially, I mean, this is geared towards men. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a statement sure. from a woman. Yeah, because most women will yeah. always remember their anniversary and mm-hmm. men typically forget. Yeah. So this is that, you know, you said it typical, Uh this is that typical, you know, kind of lazy partner that doesn't care enough to remember or keep it on the calendar or something, but it's, it's another one of those, which we find an unacceptable behavior. Mm -hmm. And I would tell a man that, that that's unacceptable behavior that nowadays women just typically write it off like, oh, well. I know. That's just how they are. Yeah. That's how guys are. That's, no, that's how not, that's how bad guys are. Yeah, and that's not how it should be. Yeah, mm-hmm. don't accept that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, I saw so. that and I was like, "Gosh, that's awful." Yeah. yeah, I remember showing it to you, and I was like, "This, this is the dumbass post of the week, right. for sure." Yeah. Oh my gosh! Well, so we went to Comic Con today, and uh, I got these awesome new little notepads. Yeah. They are so freaking cool. I got I got this one, and it's really risque. It has these. You know, like hot little chicks bondage on girls on it. Yeah. Because the bat girls get them like spanking. Yeah, it's really cool. They're really neat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I got those at the Comic Con today. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we wanted to talk about why people get offended. Um, I mean, everybody, 
It seems like everybody gets offended over everything nowadays. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of wanted to to talk about it. We were like, at first we were like, well, maybe we could just do just like a general type episode. Yeah. But then like, as we started talking about it, we, we realized that no, we can, you know, make this more geared towards relationships and well, stuff. Yeah. You know, I think that we have, you know, there's our, our stance on things we we've said from the beginning are not the norm. Mm-hmm. Our opinions about what it takes to have a good, healthy, happy, functioning marriage are not the norm. That's why we decided to do the podcast and share what we've learned from our previous horrible relationships to our fantastic relationship that we're currently in now. Mm-hmm. Um, but along the way of doing that, you know, you, we, I, you, the generic you, um, you find out that what works for you and what we share sometimes just hits a chord with people. Yeah. Um, and and we're in a we're in a world now where everybody's skin is paper thin anyway. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, you know, one thing that, like, as you're talking, one of one of our friends, um, kind of recently, uh, within a couple months, told us, you know, that she was listening to the podcast and. And she really, she really likes it, and um, and she relates to it and all that. But when she was in a bad relationship, she would, she said that if someone is in a bad relationship, they're gonna be like, they're gonna be offended. Yeah, they're gonna be offended and be like, what the hell? Like, mm-hmm. I'm okay. Like, I'm not gonna do anything <clears throat> about this. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> well, if people. And and it's funny because when you use the term offended, you know, I, I kind of think offense, but people get very defensive yes. uh-huh. about it, uh-huh. um, especially whenever they have some kind of subconscious admittance to the point that was made was right, mm-hmm. um, and that can be a hard pill to swallow, and so some people's natural reaction are to be defensive. Yeah. But I think there's I think there's different ways as to why people tend to be offended and uh, that 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 tend to be a little bit deeper than just I'm offended at something you said. Mm-hmm. I really don't. I mean, I don't understand how people can be offended by words. Period. Mm-hmm. Only if you feel that those words are directed towards you. towards you. Oh, I know. <laughs> Yeah. If somebody says, oh, all bald guys are ugly, mm-hmm. I don't get offended yeah. by that. Uh-huh. That's different than somebody saying, Seth, you're an ugly bald guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and like... Which we all know I'm not. <laughs> of course you're not. Shit. <laughs> Shut up. I'm, I'm spicier than <laughs> this drink right here. <laughs> but, the, like, <laughs> like, I mean, someone like... Like me could take offense to saying that all bald guys are ugly or whatever, because in that, are you saying that I think that bald guys, or that my husband is unattractive and so <laughs> you think that I don't have good taste or something? Well, I I, I don't know if that's the best example for that, but I think like like if if you see like a. Like one of those memes where somebody's like, I don't know how you, how you girls with these with these bald dudes be putting up with them or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. If that's it, I mean, I I see the I mean, even things that I could say, well, that's directed to me. I mean, I see weekly somebody share a post about how men's beards have more germs and filth in them than like the New York subway station. Oh, gross. And. <laughs> I'm I'm ne- I don't go on there and start trolling people. Yeah. Oh man, I know. Because I'm not a fucking idiot. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's that that's where, and I'm sure that there are. I'm sure that there are plenty of thin-skinned men with beards. And one of the manliest things you can do is grow a beard. And the, one of the most unmanly things you can do is get offended when someone makes fun of your beard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so just be a man, and yeah. don't get upset with it. But when you go and start trolling people because they have an opinion, mm-hmm. 
know. You're you're the sucker. I know. For that. Yeah. That's and and I don't. I'm I'm never like. Oh my gosh! Look at this! Look at this article that came out about men with beards and how dirty their beards are. Oh, I'm gonna write a a five page rant on Facebook about how I disagree with this and mm-hmm. and. I mean, and it's just, it's such a lame attempt to draw attention to yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I don't, I don't share them. I don't comment on them. I don't get offended by them. I, I don't care. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, I've said on here multiple times that if you want to find anything to support your side of the argument on the internet, you're going to find it no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that that's just comical to me that people will really dig in on those things. And it's not just, it's not just that. I mean, it's, it's, you know, the, 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 the article that we've seen about women with big butts are smarter than girls with flat asses. Yeah, I know. Well, I don't know who conducted this study. Uh-huh. Girls with big butts are like, yeah, check us out. I and know. Your brains are not the first thing that people are attracted to when you got a juicy butt. <laughs> so right. I don't know why that seems so important yeah, in the funny. first place. So, I know. Um, and I so, know, and I roll my eyes at that too because it's like, and and I have a I have a big butt, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, that's so stupid. Well, it's the same thing I I go through when I see the the articles of bald headed men are more confident and have higher testosterone. Yeah, yeah. because I've said it on here before. Well, you just you just gave carte blanche to all the ugly, weird, weak little bald headed dudes across <laughs> the country that now think they're empowered uh-huh. and they're not. Right. Um. So the the but the, those are those things that. You could look at it and say, well, that's directed to me. Mm-hmm. That's directed at me. Mm-hmm. And it's not. Yeah. It's not. I mean, I guess if somebody was like malicious and not, not even like joking, because I've had people tag me and stuff and be like, haha, this is you, bro. And yeah. it's just for fun. It's just dudes, you know, fucking with each other. It's not right. like somebody's really trying to hurt my feelings or something. Mm hmm. And, and and if they were, it didn't, because I just thought they were joking. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe yeah. my feelings are off tune. Well, and I think that there... I mean, I, I think that most of the time it is going to be women that get offended easier, I guess, than men. Mm. But there is a lot of men out there that do get offended mm-hmm. pretty easily as well. Um, but like going back to like even the defensive type thing... I think that people start getting, you know, they get offended, then they start getting defensive, and I think that they get defensive because they start feeling guilty. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they get, they they feel guilty, like, for example, we had a guys' night, girls' night <clears throat> episode mm-hmm. on the podcast, and um, we we believe that you shouldn't go out with couple without time your, is way more important than guy time or girl time. Yeah, without your partner. Yeah. You should go out with your partner in other cup other couples. Yeah. Not girl time or guy time mm-hmm. together. And with us telling people that, people get offended and or start feeling guilty. Right. About well it. and I, I think that you, you have different pockets of, of people's reactions when you when you say that. And using that example if if we make a very dug-in comment, like um, even flipping it on, on, on the, the, the positive end for those that don't, like, well, couples that don't do guys' night and girls' night are happier. I don't know if that's a proven fact or not. I know that we, we are, are happier, happier. <laughs> but we don't know if that's a, a statistical proven fact that, you know... We, we think that great couples, that's a non-issue. Mm-hmm. But if, I make, if we make the statement that uh, you know, couples that forego guys' night and girls' night are happier than those that don't, mm-hmm. and that, 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 you know, the ones that do go out aren't as happy. If you hear that and you are an advocate for your own space and your own life away from your partner and you want to go out with the girls or you want to go out with the guys, you're going to get defensive. Mm-hmm. If you're thin-skinned yeah. and if you're one of those people that has to get offended by everything... You could find a way to get offended by that. Mm-hmm. But why? Mm-hmm. Is it because if somebody says something like that and you say, well, I know I shouldn't go out with the guys and go hit the bars and go, you know, whatever you're doing in that time. Mm-hmm. I know my wife wanted me to stay home and I did it anyway. Mm-hmm. 
You're not mad at us. You feel guilty. Yeah. Because you're doing something you know you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah, that's so true. Because if it's a non-issue in your relationship, guess what? You don't get offended by it. Uh-huh. I know. Yeah. And, well, and one, one that we were talking about that kind of goes hand in hand with feeling guilty is feeling shameful mm-hmm. about, I mean, if you, so if you did go out on that guy's night and girl's night and then, or your partner did, and then your partner ended up cheating or something. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, us <laughs> calling you out on, well, you know, maybe if your partner didn't go on guys' night and girls' night yeah. out. Then well, and then, and then yeah, they wouldn't have cheated, but then that's followed by our statement of, you shouldn't stay with a partner who cheated on you. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then and you're, you're embarrassed like... that you've stayed in that relationship. Yes. Where there's infidelity. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, once again, your, your offended reaction and behavior is really shame and embarrassment mm-hmm. because of what transpired. I know. Yeah. Um, I mean, that it's just... It is embarrassing, and I understand that that that's how people do feel, yeah. I'm sure, when they do listen to, well, and, to and us talk about it. You should be embarrassed. Mm-hmm. And then, that's just a fact. You, you should, I mean, I would be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed. Mm-hmm. That's a normal, natural reaction. It's not a, that's not a, I'm shaking my finger at you telling someone, well, you, you should have known better. That's, mm-hmm. No, you should be embarrassed. That's how you should react to that situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know, I mean, I don't know about me being, ever being offended or anything by what other people did, Mm -hmm. but I I know that I definitely felt shame. And if I did listen to a podcast like ours when I was with my ex, Mm -hmm. I would feel shame because I would, if I was still with the drug addict idiot, Mm -hmm. (laughs) then... I would be, I'd be like, gosh, like, uh, I don't want to admit to anybody, everybody else that this is going on. Mm-hmm. And I probably would be offended by what we have to say. Yeah. But it would be derived out of embarrassment and, yeah. and your own kind of self-admittance that uh-huh. what you're doing is wrong. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's where it still ties into the guilt piece as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. I know, because you feel guilty that you're even... Still in the relationship, too. Mm-hmm. And you shouldn't be. Um, I, I know that... Because we do... We do things... Differently than... Than everybody else. And... I guess with, with the way that we... We are with each other and... Everything that all our podcast... <clears throat> you know, is, mm-hmm. or what we believe in, um, a lot of people don't, don't see it the same way we do. I mean, we say that good relationships should not take hard work. Right. And most people say that they do take hard work. Yeah. And so... And that, that's coupled with they think they're in a good relationship. Mm-hmm. And so they say, well, I'm in a great relationship because I work hard and bust my ass every day for my relationship. And so their definition of a good relationship is different than ours. Mm -hmm. And so when we make those statements that good relationships should be effortless, they shouldn't take hard work, you should do this and that, and our recipe for our successful marriage is different than your recipe for for your version of a successful marriage, Mm -hmm. people don't like to hear that. Yeah, they don't like to hear different opinions. Mm -hmm. They don't like to hear that I mean, that, and that's part of the reason why. I mean, we did one episode on your relationship is is normal. Your normal relationship is... Your relationship, your relationship is, is normal, normal, but it's, it's still, still bad. bad. Yeah. And, um, and there's just... There's so many people that are, that are in that bad, awful relationship that mm-hmm. just do not, do not understand and don't want to understand. So yeah. they're like... Well, <coughs> they're doing things differently, and I'm going to continue to do things my way, mm-hmm. but screw their their beliefs. 
I'm offended by them. Right. Well, and, and that's still one of those things where if we say good relationships take hard work and you get upset when you hear that, that's because you're working too hard in your relationship. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's because you don't have as good of a relationship as you think you do, mm-hmm. or even comparative to other people, it's not as good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's why when pe- people want to almost dismiss it with, well, there's, you know, there's more than one way to, you know, what, 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 what's the saying? There's more than one way to skin a cat. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, if that's what you want to say, if the ultimate goal is to, you know, stay married, we've talked about that before, if, if the cat in this scenario is staying married, there's more than one way to stay married. Yeah, you can stay married and be miserable. Mm-hmm. You can stay married and fight all the time. You can get divorced and get back together and still, or break up and separate and get back together and still stay married. I know, but, have you, you've seen that little, uh, that meme, or the quote, that it says it's not a meme it's a quote it's um it's something like not every relationship is oh gosh how does it go not every relationship is great Mm -hmm. but every relationship is beautiful or something like that oh some kind of everybody gets a trophy type statement yeah uh-huh yeah I mean, and I guess that I I just think like yeah, not every relationship is. Maybe it's not every relationship is the same, mm-hmm. but every relationship is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Either way, that's uh-huh. wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's like the same statement that everybody's beautiful. Uh huh. No, they're not. Uh huh. Not everybody is. I know. It's just a fact. Yeah. And and I think that you know when it comes to relationships, I mean that's that is this all inclusive type of mentality of why everybody gets offended instead of saying no there are differences this couple fights all the fucking time but they've been together for 50 years well this couple's never fought a day in their life and they've been together 50 years mm-hmm. but this this couple does this everybody feels like they have to belong to one of those pockets and defend that pocket yeah. till it's in uh-huh. when it's okay to even have that statement that there's more than one way to do this we still just believe there's one best way to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Um, I think going to going back to like the beautiful thing, um, and people get uh, people will probably get offended by you saying that not everybody is beautiful. Right. And but mm. I, I I think about people's self esteem, mm-hmm. and they're not only their self esteem but like. How they feel about their relationship too, okay, yeah. and how they, how they, how they see their relationship. They don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like they don't have. They, they don't have the self confidence. Yeah, in their relate in their own relationship, and so, because of that, they. They don't have yeah. They don't have they don't have a high enough confidence level of their own relationship. Mm-hmm. Not really. Maybe not even just them personally. Right. Uh-huh. But of their own relationship. And we, we've met couples like that that are kind of... It's it's almost like the, the person that's dating someone beneath them that kind of warns you about them. Oh, gosh. That they do that people do that. They do that about their marriage. Uh-huh. Where... Because we've had that where people that have met us, like one, one member of the, the couple meets us mm-hmm. together. And they say, yeah, one of these days you'll have to hang out with us. I mean, our marriage is nothing like yours, but... Maybe we'll have a good time anyway. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, why even say that? Yeah. You know, it's not, we're, it's not this competition. We're not weighing out the relationships, but it's, you, you can tell there's not enough confidence in a relationship to even be proud of their own relationship, which should be a red flag, I would think. Mm-hmm. If you're embarrassed, ashamed, guilty, or, you know, have no confidence in your own relationship, that, that's, a, that's a pretty bad sign. Yeah. Well, I think that even if, when you're starting to date someone and you don't have the enough confidence to say, oh, this is the person that I'm dating. You're not proud and, enough of them. Yeah, yeah. and, I, and I, I really like them and they're, they're awesome and you get, you're, you're going to like them. Mm-hmm. But there are so many people that 
are like, yeah, like you said, warn. Yeah. Warn the people about their new partner that, mm-hmm. and you know, who knows that freaking person will probably, they'll end up getting married and, and. Yeah. Well, we've seen that too. Not be happy together. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's one of those that if you, if you warn people about your partner before they meet them, you, you just now made everybody give a judgment call mm-hmm. based on your opinion of your own partner. Now everybody's going to be reflective of, of what you think of your own partner. Yeah, I know. Well, it, didn't you, you would like, in some of your, in your classes that you would teach, you, you know, you teach a person how to teach. Mm-hmm. And so when, if someone were to go up in front of, you know, a whole bunch of class or whatever and say, oh, you know, this is my first time doing yeah, this. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. I'm going to be good at this, but, you know, mm-hmm. just just bear with me or whatever. Right. People are going to judge them right away. Oh, yeah. They're going to immediately think you don't know what you're doing. Uh-huh. Yeah. But if you go in... With some confidence. Yeah. <laughs> and be like, okay, yeah, this is what this is what's going to happen, you know, mm-hmm. and, and go with the flow that way. People are going to look at things, look at you differently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, their whole perspective can change. You... You, you get to initially dictate and set that impression mm-hmm. of what their viewpoint and perspective is going to be of your partner, of your relationship, of, of your self-confidence, of all of those things. And once you start pulling the curtain back and showing these vul- vulnerabilities and these poking holes in your own person and partner, mm-hmm. you, you know, you're, you're the one setting all that up for everybody. That's nobody's fault but yours when you do that. Yeah, I know. I know. We were we were really talking about this, and um, we were trying to figure out like, well, are people are people really offended, or are they just narcissistic? Yeah, very self centered, and this is one of those where anytime you hear or see something, you think it's directed to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you think that everybody cares so much about the, like the whole world revolves around you mm-hmm. that if you know when I say I don't even know what what to say that that it can even sound halfway nice but any any time you hear or see something that you could construe as negative and meant towards you that's how you file it off mm-hmm. and then you get upset about that. Yeah. And you get defensive and you get offended and you pick a fight or you, you know, whatever you want to do to draw attention to yourself. Mm-hmm. But you think it's about you. Mm-hmm. Well, and I have personally had this happen to me from the podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody getting offended and getting irritated about something that I said. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't Seth that said it was me. Right. <laughs> And, um, and I was like, okay, like, sorry, you know, I didn't had nothing to do with you at all. Right. And so I, I don't know what to tell you, mm-hmm. but so many people freaking do this though. Well, and, and, and it is them just being self-consumed. Well, and the, the funny thing about that, which these people that do that don't understand is they're admitting whatever it is that you're negatively saying about a general population, this other group, or yeah. so even if you are intending it for someone else, maybe it is directed towards someone, but it's just not them. Mm-hmm. They are raising their hand and waving it like a little kid in class saying, me, 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 when you do that. Yeah, I know. You know? Making themselves look when you, when you say worse. When you say, man, you've got to be a dumb bitch to stay with, you know, with somebody that you keep breaking up with and getting back together with that's addicted to drugs. Yeah. And you're like, if you get mad and you call, try to call me or us out on that and say, I don't like what you said. You just said, oh, well, I'm the dumbass that's mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah. And that's what's so comical about it is they actually throw themselves under the bus mm-hmm. in the process of being so self-centered. Yeah. And, and guess what? All eyes are on you now yeah. because you just called them all to you. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. To everybody, too. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knew it was about you <laughs> until you had to make a big deal about it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it's still not about you. You just think it's about you. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had that when 
I, I can't even remember. One of the things uh, I saw, we, we had, we had this one, we knew this one person that was, um, uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, that's right. She was continually checking in at the gym. Mm-hmm. She would take a selfie oh, in her car yeah. in front of the gym uh-huh. every day. Uh-huh. Uh, never saw her actually doing anything, but we take a picture of her in the car outside of her gym, and this lasted for about a week and a half until she gave up on her, you know, horribly expensive gym membership. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I posted something about that you were glad you, that I didn't... I was so glad that you don't feel the need to check in at the gym every day. Uh-huh. How you let the results speak for themselves, and had another girl that this was not directed to at all send me a message block me unfriend me and we went through this whole rigmarole and it had nothing to do with her at all yeah i know yeah i know people get so offended over (laughs) over some dumb shit Mm -hmm. and and uh, well i mean for instance even this last week we had a friend that posted something and uh about like the the lip yeah. thing, lay off the collagen in your face or something. Yeah, and um, and she's like, "What's up with that?" And and then like a couple hours later, she some, was like, "Some big lip friend of hers got all upset." Like, <laughs> yeah, she was like, "Sorry, <laughs> everybody, I shouldn't have said that. You know, I shouldn't have posted that." And I'm thinking, you don't need to apologize for, for having an opinion. Yeah, for what you think. Yeah. Who cares? Like. Well, sorry, sorry, you're so fucking sensitive. Well, the the opinion thing is is one of those that that just that cracks me up because we've I don't know how many times we've been categorized as by people that know us very well that oh you're you guys are very, very opinionated. opinionated. <clears throat> well, everybody's fucking opinionated. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Everybody has, has an opinion about everything. Yeah. So it's it's not. You're not doing anything when you say that, that well, you're, you're, you're so opinionated. No, we just have a different opinion than you mm-hmm. or somebody else or whatever it is. Right. But they equally are as quote-unquote opinionated mm-hmm. as us. They just have a different opinion. Yes. But we are those type of people that we understand mm-hmm. and don't care what your opinion is. Well, I'm not going to dislike you. Yeah. Based on your opinion. Uh-huh. I can think you're wrong until the cows go home. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I'm not going to dislike or that I'm going to dislike you. Uh-huh. But there are so many people now that fall into this paper thin offended category mm-hmm. that cannot handle someone else's opinion about anything. Yeah. If it's not their opinion, they feel that they almost have to hate you uh-huh. or have to make it clear which side of the fence that they are on. Yeah. I know. When, at the end of the day, it's not that important anyway. No. No, at all. And, yeah, it's like, for us, it's like, why why waste any of our time on any of that? Yeah. Like, getting... Well, and, and that's the thing, is you you never, especially via be a social media now, you're not going to change anybody's mind. No. On anything. No. I mean, and whether it's whether it's politics, whether it's, you know... Whatever, uh-huh. fitness, food, uh-huh. sports teams. I know. I mean, you, you you can you can look at how much divisive action takes place just by saying the name LeBron James mm-hmm. or Tom Brady or Donald Trump. I mean, there there's certain trigger names out there that people immediately have to tell you which side they're on. Yeah. Well, I hate LeBron James. I'm Michael Jordan all the way. Michael Jordan's the best ever. Mm-hmm. I fuck LeBron James. And there's other people that will take the other argument. Well, and they really, like, they really take it to heart. Oh, yeah. Like, it actually affects them. Yeah. Like, it actually has dick to do with your everyday life. That somebody thinks LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan, or Michael Jordan's better than LeBron James. Uh Uh-huh. We all know Dennis Rodman was the best basketball player that ever (laughs) But, you know, everybody just has to stay so dug in on things. Mm -hmm. And so when some when somebody shares that opinion, mm-hmm. they just they don't they just go into like meltdown mode, mm-hmm. like it really actually fucking has to do with their well being. Yeah, I know. And it doesn't. Uh-huh. Most of the shit that people choose to get, and you are, 
you are choosing to get offended. Uh-huh. You, you aren't going to give me a scenario where I will ever say, you know what? You should be offended. I don't think so. You're choosing to be offended. Yeah. You're choosing to react that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless it's a personal attack. Right. Uh-huh. Then I could, I, I could maybe see that, but I still think there's, there's a level of choice in there. Mm-hmm. But these, these passerby comments, these passerby conversations, these, these opinions, these memes, these, these you know, stances on, on whatever it is, you are choosing to get offended. Mm-hmm. And your argument, no matter how strong you think it is... It is never going to be strong enough to change someone else's mind. Yeah, I know. Ever. I know. And, like, I mean, part of us doing the podcasts and everything, too, is, I mean, to talk about about what we, our success and mm-hmm. everything that we've had and just, and what not to do in relationships, really. But if if someone doesn't agree with what we have to say, I... I don't really see us changing their mind, and that's okay. Yeah, we're not gonna be. We're offended. not gonna change our minds, though. Right. Yeah. I mean, that that's that's okay. Uh huh. Yeah, you know? it's okay. You can keep being wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, they're gonna. You have your opinion. We have ours. Mm-hmm. And if you're offended by, by what we have to say, then so be it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I I think that. The people really, truly believe that whatever, you know, fact-based knowledge they think they're bringing to the table is enough to change someone's mind. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people don't even have that fact-based argument. It's really hearsay. Well, so-and-so did this, and I know somebody that did this and that, and it worked for them. Yeah. You know, it's... It's not concrete, and even if it is concrete, whichever side you're on, that's still may, that's still not going to be enough evidence for somebody to actually change their mind. Mm-hmm. I mean, and you you see that just every single day with everything. I mean, even even in the world we live in with fitness, mm-hmm. I mean, there are everybody in our gym is doing something different, mm-hmm. yeah. and there's a lot of them that are doing the same thing and have been for years, and it ain't fucking working. Yeah. And they're not going to change what they're doing, and they're not going to get any results. But trying to tell them that blowing the money they are and the sessions they are on the weak-ass training they're doing isn't helping. Mm -hmm. They aren't going to not do that. Mm -hmm. Even if they see somebody else making progress and making change, people don't want to admit that they either made the wrong decision or they're just so dug in, they they can't even see that they made the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. Um, well, and I think that's, I think that is really, I think that people get offended by that kind of stuff because they are wrong. <laughs> yeah. And they know they're wrong. Mm-hmm. And so... And they don't want to admit they're wrong. Yeah. Uh-huh. And if you got offended by that, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But, uh, but, I mean, the truth hurts. Yeah. It's not, it's not an easy pill to swallow. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, how many times do we? I, I am, and I, I think that people that probably don't know the conversations that I have with just you mm-hmm. would find this hard to believe. But I, I mean, I, I all the time I'm like, I'll hear something or see something or read something, and be like, cheese. I do that. And it's not good. It's not something good. It's not something positive. And I'm like, yeah, I do that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that a lot of people even have the capacity to do that. Yeah. Like admit to it. Uh Yeah. Yeah. And and it's, I think that one of the things that that I've, I've been pretty good, I mean, even since I was a kid or in school or when I was in the military, even in, in my career now, I don't, I don't make excuses. Mm-hmm. If something doesn't work or goes wrong or I screw up, I say it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, this, this, was all, this was all me. Even sometimes when it's not all my fault, I'll still take the blame or the heat mm-hmm. just because it's the right thing to do. But 
taking responsibility for things that you can change or control when you're doing things wrong is is something everybody should do. Mm-hmm. But far too many people don't do it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that there there's just not people that are open minded enough. I think that I get I get pretty pigeonholed with judging a book by its cover, which we all do. I'm as guilty as anybody of mm-hmm. judging a book by its cover. People make pretty generalistic gross assumptions about me. Mm-hmm. Um and I think there's a lot of people that kind of fall in that category. And sometimes you're right, but sometimes you're wrong. Mm-hmm. And I think that there, we, we, we've seen it especially of late of somebody just assuming that my opinions or views on certain things were on this side of the argument and they aren't. Mm-hmm. But just their assumption that I was made them not want to associate with me at all mm-hmm. when they were wrong. They, they completely falsely assumed whatever they think that they knew about me. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. You know? I know. That was, yeah, I know. That was ridiculous. And I don't know, like, <laughs> me being who I am, like, I wish that, I wish that people knew you the way that I know you because I know that you're better than what people think about you. Right. But at the same time, I'm like, no, only I can get that. (laughs) (laughs) Only I get good Seth. Everyone else can have bad asshole Seth or whatever, but at least I get good Seth. Right. But that, but it's still, but sometimes I'm like, no, you guys are so fucking wrong. You couldn't be more wrong. (laughs) Yeah. You know? And it, well, and it's my, my, I I say it every time it happens. My, one of my favorite sayings is, is the Eminem song. I am whatever you say I am. Yeah. And I I say that all the time. If, if people don't want, and, and I, I, I fully understand the responsibility that, and, and how it falls on me that if I've, painted myself as a certain way then that's that's how they're going to see me so I, I completely take credit for that mm-hmm. whether it's good credit or bad credit <laughs> yeah but at the same time the the gross assumption that I feel or think or view things in a certain light which are just not true um, I don't even want to say it's unfair but I think it's unfair to them because they they just aren't willing to to give it a chance mm-hmm. yeah. to see what it is uh, or, or see what... To get to know Yeah, you. to get to know me or something. Uh-huh. And I don't want to get to know people that much anyway. So <laughs> I know. I, I'm not, it's not like I'm not sleeping at night because <laughs> I of know. it. I don't get, I well, and one thing that you, like, now, you have said, like, maybe what I should do is, is warn people because you don't ever friend request anybody mm-hmm. on Facebook or social media. And if you, you know, give you, give people fair warning that you're probably going to be offended. Yeah. If you're easily offended, do not friend request me. Mm -hmm. Because. And that's the thing. Nobody thinks they're easily offended. Yeah. Nobody Uh thinks they're as big a (laughs) pussy as they really are. Uh Uh-huh. Until they start getting offended and (laughs) then they show their true colors. Uh Uh-huh. Everybody wants to talk all this, this tough game about how, oh. Because I say it all the time. I tell people all the time, hey, you know, even about the podcast, you know, if somebody's like, oh, I heard you guys got a podcast. Oh, like, yeah, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. I'm letting you know. You may look at me differently. If you know me casually. <laughs> I know. I know. And you just see me. That's why I don't talk about it with people I work with. I don't want people I work with listening to this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But people that casually know me or, or were acquaintances, mm-hmm. I... I Totally different impression of me than you do you, warn them. Yeah, yeah, and I do. I'm you like do. you. You know, watch out. I I so I kind of joke around about it and actually make it sound like you're the mean one. Uh huh. But and everybody's like, oh no no no, oh I love that type of stuff. And then you find out, well no they don't. Yeah, I know. Well I know there was yeah because there was one guy at, uh, at the gym that he he was like oh okay, yeah I'll listen to your show. And then, like, I don't know, it seemed like a couple months went by, yeah. and we're like, 
Did he listen? I bet he listened and he doesn't want to talk yeah, to us anymore. Talk to us. <laughs> but it turns out he did listen and he liked it. So, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't know. With all of this, you just don't get offended so easily, people. If you're looking for a reason to get offended, there's a huge surprise for you. You're going to get offended. Mm hmm. And think about whenever... And think about why. You know, why, about why are you getting, getting offended? offended? Are you getting offended because you're doing something wrong mm-hmm. and it feels like you got called out on the carpet? Are you getting offended because you're embarrassed about what you did mm-hmm. and you feel like now someone pulled that curtain back and you have to admit to what you did? Are you getting offended because you're actually wrong? <laughs> yeah. And... You hearing that, you know, or is or is it just because you're one of those self-centered, self-consumed people that just thinks everything's about you? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I know even saying that, I, you know, you know, there's gonna be people that are like, was that episode about me? <laughs> I know. Was that oh story you told gosh. about me? Yeah. Uh-huh. Was that a, and you know. News flash, the same things happen to multiple people. Yeah, it's not, not just every story, about you. Even if it's coincidental, that's not about you. Yeah. Oh. you know? Well, I know, and, and uh, you know, sometimes, I mean, we, we see people, I mean, they message us mm-hmm. or they'll comment on stuff and they'll be like, oh my gosh, you're speaking to me. Like, what you, what you said in your podcast <clears throat> the other day, like, really spoke to me, blah, blah, blah. And... Of course, you know, like we, we're not intentionally directing it to right. these people, but that's what we want. We want it to speak to you. We want this to, to do something for some people, yeah. you know. The, the goal out of, you know, whether you believe this or not, the goal of the episodes is not to offend people. Yeah. It's not to make people feel bad. It's to challenge you. Mm-hmm. To look at your own situation and challenge you to grow the fuck up and make good decisions. You know, we, we recently just had a conversation with a friend about motivation mm-hmm. and how I'm not, I know that people will look at me and or work with me or work out with me and be like, oh yeah, you're very motivational and, and, and that's not really my intent. I get mm-hmm. that, but... You're, well, I think that, like, because you're such a good teacher, that I think that you probably are really motivational. That's not my intent. I know it's not your intent, (laughs) but you are because you you teach well. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, what to, you have so much knowledge, and so you want to... You tell the people, you know, exactly what they need to hear. Right. And so some people can see that as being motivational, yeah. even though you, <laughs> you don't. Well, and, and, and I think that, you know, telling people what, the, what they need to hear and not what they want to hear is what part of the problem is. Yeah, that's um, true. But I, I think that if, if, if what we say or what we talk about, and, and we've gotten this type of feedback, and I think that's great that... If a story we've shared or a life experience we've talked about or our own current happiness gave you the motivation Mm -hmm. to repair your relationship, get out of your bad relationship, you know, be happy being single or be happy being you or get in shape or save money or all the other stuff that we've talked about over the last, you know, year plus of episodes here then that's great. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, you know, getting messages from total strangers we've never met that have done things for the better for their relationship based on something that we shared that, once again, was not directed to them, mm-hmm. but somehow it was. Yeah. That... It speaks to them. Yeah. That they were able to improve their own situation. That That's what makes us very happy mm-hmm. is, is hearing those types of does. stories. It does, yes. And we don't go out fishing for those. Those are people that just free will want to respond back to us or reach out to us or, or let us know the impact that it's had. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that that's uh, the overall, you know, my, my intent a lot of times with, with a lot of this stuff is, is really just 
to challenge you, challenge, challenge you as, as a person, as a partner, as someone in a relationship, as a husband, as a wife, to do the stuff that we've talked about. You know, be the best, best version of yourself. I'm not trying to motivate you to be the best version of yourself. I'm challenging you. Yeah. And so when Crystal says things like, I believe everybody can do everything they put their mind to, and I say, no, you can't. <laughs> He's challenging you. I'm challenging you. you. Prove uh, me wrong. Yeah, I'm saying you can't. I'm the cheerleader. Yeah. He's, he's Prove challenging. me wrong. He's challenging you. So when I say you're a self-centered, narcissistic bitch that thinks everything on this podcast is about you, prove, prove me, me wrong. wrong by not reaching out and acting like it's about you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that it's it's more of a, of a challenge to do what you know you should be doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I shouldn't or we shouldn't have to be this couple that's going to pat you on the rear end through your entire day and tell you what a great person you're going to be and how much you can accomplish if you do this and all that. Just do it. I'm challenging you to do it. Mm-hmm. Just fix your shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know? I know. Send me the after pictures. Yeah. We, I know. One one thing that we like to, to say is make it happen. Yeah. M-I-H. M-I-H. Make, make it happen. <laughs> I don't care what your plan is. Don't tell me what your plan is. Uh-huh. Don't show me all your, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G all the way to Z. Just get to Z. And then and show. Maybe give show. Give me the highlights. Maybe show. Yeah. Uh-huh. Show me how you got there. Exactly. And I'll shake your hand, congratulate you. And if you prove me wrong, I'll fucking high five you. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think you will. <laughs> and there's your challenge. You can. You can do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that wraps it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't I really have anything else to say about it. Um, but as always, thank you all so much for listening. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and listen to us wherever you listen to your podcast. Try this drink. Yes, this try this drink. This thing is awesome. It's really good. And did it get spicier? <laughs> yeah. Does, yeah. That's why I was like, <clears throat> yeah. cough for a minute. Uh-huh. Um, but we'll talk to you next week. Thank you.